All right, so very honored to be, um, to be able to talk and an honor you to Pearl here. Um, this talk here actually arose from, um, I went to a NIPS workshop um, on probabilistic programming languages a few, um, probably about two years ago now, and everyone had reinvented probabilistic programming languages, even though we thought we'd done it a long time ago, and everyone was, my language is different to your language because it was represented in C, or was based on Scheme, or was based on Java, or was based on logic programming, and basically everyone was all doing the same thing, um, but just with different programming languages, and so the idea here was to try and abstract and talk about how can we talk about it in terms of, um, of programming languages. And what I'm going to try and argue here is that the, um, the, way, the way to think about probabilistic programming languages, in some sense, is the same way that Yuda Pearl argues that you should think about causation, is that we're going to think about them in terms of basically deterministic um, functional equations, in our case, they're going to be programming languages, and probability is introduced basically as exogenous inputs to these programming languages. Okay, so this is what Yuda says, this is the way we're going to view um, causal models, and I'm going to see how we can view the programming languages and try and explain the work in programming languages over the last 20 years in terms of this framework. So basically the probabilistic programming languages have four things that they're doing. So first of all, they have probabilistic inputs. And as far as I can tell, the first language is um, Simula in 1966. Um, so I'm going to give examples that had explicitly had probabilistic inputs in the language. Okay, and all of the examples I'm going to use are from Simula, okay, just so that no one feels that I'm, using, um, you know, I'm not using their language. Then what you can do in Simula, but people didn't typically, is conditioning on observations and querying for distributions. So we're going to query about what's the probability of something, the conditional probabilities. We can do inference. Um, in Simula, we can do rejection sampling, just from the compiler coming straight out of the box. You can do rejection sampling. We want to do more efficient inference, and we also want to learn these probabilities from the data. So here is a, um, so first of all, Simula can represent any Bayes net. Okay, so here is a, um, a Bayes net, of a simple Bayes net, the probability of A and the probability of B given A and the probability of C given A. Here is the Bayes net in Simula. It's going to have exactly the same distribution. If you do a rejection sampling on this, it's going to have exactly the same distribution as this Bayes net. Okay, we're going to sample A. Then we're going to sample B depending on A. And if A is true, we're going to do one sample. And if A is false, we're going to draw from another sample, and they're going to exactly the, the, the independent draws in here are going to correspond exactly to the parameters of the Bayes net. Okay. One of the things we can do is we could actually name all of these things in here and just basically say there's a name, this is B if A, and B if not A, and C if B, and C if not B, and just basically we're going to name each of these random samples, and then basically we're going to give this deterministic system, this gives a deterministic system of how B depends on these inputs and C depends on these inputs. Okay, so in some sense, this Bayes net, this similar program, and this independent, basically independent choices plus this deterministic system that gives consequences is going to be the basis for a lot of the programming languages. And so now in this programming languages, this programming language can get more and more complex but it's basically going to have the same structure over um, just independent draws in here. We could have loops, we might have it have multiple independent draws, but we can view it as the terms of these independent draws plus the logical consequence in here. Okay. Now there's actually, all oh, right. So there's going to be, so what we're going to do is for each probabilistic input encountered in the execution of a program, there's sort of what we'll call an alternative. So one of these is going to be chosen by the program. And there's a probabilistic choice for each alternative. That's what we're going to call it, this probabilistic choice sort of semantics. And there are a few semantics which are all going to coincide for this. So there's rejection sampling, just like you do in Simula, um, we have rejection sampling semantics. We could have an independent choice semantics. There's a possible world for each assignment of a value to each alternative. So there's a whole lot of independent choices. 
And the program specifies what's true in each world, and that's going to give the same semantics. We could have a program trace semantics. There's a possible world for each choice encountered in each execution path. Or there's what we call an abductive semantics as a possible world, basically we're just trying to work out what's the minimal set of assumptions to prove to infer the observations and the value for a query. So in here we're just trying to say what's the minimal set of assumptions that we need, well the minimal set of choices that we need in order to, to do these. And it turns out these can all be shown to be the same. Okay, so let's give an example of this. So here is the same. So here is the same definition we gave before. We named the choices that the, our similar program um, gave. And basically, there's a world for each assignment of all of these choices in here. Okay. The program trace semantics basically says, well, when A is false, B if A doesn't need to be defined. So we're not going to have a world, that's not going to be defined in any world. So we're going to have world W assigns A, B if, so A is false, B if not A is false, and C if not B is false, um, et cetera. And so we're going to have all of these worlds, and some of these, so in here there's only eight worlds that we're going to have, um, and each of these has a probability. And basically the things that are, those values that are not encountered are not in this possible world. And in the abductive semantics, it's sort of a subset of these that only need to explain, you only need to infer the observation and the query, or the observation and not the query. So basically, here we have very fewer worlds for doing this. All right. So here's, a, um, so here's another similar program. We're going to have x. If x is true, we're going to define y. And if x is false, we're going to define z. Okay. So Y is only defined when X is true and Z is only defined when X is false. And so now there's different arguments that people are having for when they're doing um, inference in these. So basically what, so the, probably the best example of exact inference is in um, Eyeball by Avi Pfeffer. And here he does, so basically, so in the program trace and abductive semantics, oh sorry, right, sorry. So in the program trace and abductive semantics, y and z are not defined in the same possible worlds. So although we have this nice simple compact, uh, y and z are not defined in the same worlds. And one of the reasons where this is different is all of a sudden if we do variable elimination, for example, we're summing out variable, if we sum out x, um, then in the program trace and abductive semantics, basically we have, a, in the, sorry, in the program trace semantics, we sort of get a, we get a problem because Y and Z are not defined in the same worlds. And so a lot of the work on probabilistic programming languages is sort of how to efficiently handle exact inference. So a lot of the eyeball work was about variable elimination in this and we have to worry about, summing, for example, summing out X and having Y and Z have in the independent choice semantics that it's all well defined and the other semantics it's not well defined what happens. And the other one is if you're doing MCMC then there's a whole lot of choices in here if we flip the value of, a, of x from true to false, then all of a sudden y becomes, z becomes observed or not observed, and there's different choices what we're going to, of whether, when, um, whether we're going to basically store the counterfactual. So if x is true, then y is not defined. y gives sort of the counterfactual in here about what happens if x were to be false. In MCMC, if we flip x do we, from um, true to false, do we throw away y or do we keep it? And these are all choices that people are getting and arguing about and are, are different choices that people make. And basically by thinking about these different semantics, it tells you different choices that is going to arise. Um, so, and here are some challenges now about futures of probabilistic programming languages. If you're a Bayesian, you should you should condition on all applicable data. So this is what, if you're Bayesian, this is what you should tell, condition on everything in the world that's going to be relevant. So what happens when the data and the models are built by diverse sets of people? So in some of the applications we've been doing, basically the data is produced by people who we don't know anything about our models and we don't know about them, but we want to interoperate with them because we want to condition on them. There are people in developing ontologies to enable semantic interoperability so that I can get data from anywhere in the world and condition on it to make my predictions. And this is one of the real challenges that we want, need to go, is how can we really be Bayesian? 
because hardly anyone is really Bayesian and really conditions on all the knowledge in the world that's applicable to their theory. Okay? And this is lots of challenge. Um, so lots of challenges for allowing pe publishing of ontologies, data, and hypotheses. So one of the things we also want to do is to, to let lots of people publish theories, publish hypotheses about the world so that someone else can, um, can use the best theories. Unlike Google, which tries to tell you, here's the most popular web page, or here's the most popular prediction for what you're doing. Um, what we want to do is to say, if you're a scientist, popularity or appeal to authority the wrong answer. You want to know, what does the data tell you? So what we're trying to do is to get it. So let's condition all the data. Let's find out all the data so we can do this. All right. So um, all right. So I've got two more minutes. So in overall, there are lots of underlying deterministic systems that differ. And there's logic programming, ML, Scheme, and Java, and C. Um, and there are lots of similarities between these. You know, there's um, about between these languages. We, somehow we have to understand what's going on underneath there. Um, and there are many challenges that are involved in it. Um, we're still working on inference and learning on these. Um, conditioning on all relevant data and basically heterogeneous data sets um, and heterogeneous probabilistic models that work at different levels of abstraction and, and detail. And again, probability of identity and existence is another thing problem that arises. Okay. Thank you.